Okay, Jordan, we've taken the long preamble through psychic multiplicity. You've warned me again and again about archetypal inflation. Can we please just talk about Carl Jung and the archetypal theories? And can I finally integrate my archetypes? No, is the answer. Because I've been reflecting on this lesson, which you're about to participate in for the last few hours, about how I want to present the theory of archetypes, and I've encountered a few internal blockages which I'd like to bring into the shared space that you and I are having in this exact moment. I've noticed that my teacher archetype is encountering a strong degree of resistance about talking about the archetypes, and I've reflected, why is it I'll be honest with you, why is it that I do not want to film this module? Why am I so resistant? Because everything else in this course, it's fine. I've really enjoyed the process, but actually, I'm not filming this module as the second module. I've filmed almost the entirety of the course, and I'm coming back to this module. And I realized there must be something to do with my actual experience of helping people integrate with their archetypes rather than the experience of teaching a lesson on the archetypes. I found a few quotes which actually back up my point so I can retroactively say, aha, I was a wise teacher all along, but my honest reality is that archetypal theory need only go as far as the person is able to integrate. And what I mean by this is that when I'm working with a particular male client and we're talking about the King Warrior Magician Lover archetypes, it's important for them to usually focus on one of those archetypes. If they're a particularly addicted individual, they've got lots of addiction issues, or maybe they've got sexual compulsions, we look at the lover. If they are a man who is struggling to creatively dream and move somewhere else, we look at the magician. If I'm working with a female client and they're struggling to speak up and step into their power at the workplace, we maybe look more towards the queenly archetype, or we look more towards something like the Athena archetype from a Greek mythology perspective. But I don't sit there in the session for multiple hours in a row and say this is the archetypal theory here is a list of all the archetypes and that's exactly what i'm going to be doing in this module and i have resisted it so much i put this module off and yet we are here i am going to teach the lesson but i think there's something really important that i want to bring into the conversation in the same way if you and I were in a session together, I always pay attention to my counter-transference, which means my counter-projection or how my body's feeling in regards to a certain topic or a certain moment that we might be discussing. Archetypal theory and the idea that you could even capture the archetypes is almost the same kind of connection to talking about God. You will never get to the bottom of God, you will only ever be able to talk around or flank through the concepts of God. God is a circle whose center is nowhere and circumference is everywhere. I think that's a Meister Eckhart quote and it's very much the same with archetypes. In fact, I even found a selected quote from Carl Jung himself to back up this whole point, but I just need to get this framed. I know it's been multiple lessons in a row. I promise the rest of the course isn't like this, but there's something about this module. There's something inside of me that wants to steer you away from going too deep into the theory and becoming too narratively focused that I just can't bypass. I, I need to bring it in. I've tried for several hours before filming this lesson to just try and calm myself down, get out of my own way, but it would feel inauthentic. And here we are doing the inner work. So my authenticity is what I'm going to bring into the space. And it doesn't matter what you want, my authenticity, my truth, that's what we're going to focus on. Bit of tongue in cheek. All of that being said, Let's go into the quotes and we will give an overview of archetypal theory, what archetypes are, how we work with them, and then set the stage for the masculine and feminine archetypes in the up and coming lessons. Let's turn towards my favorite book on archetypes, Archetype by Anthony Stevens. If you haven't watched this curriculum review, please do, because it's in some ways a better lesson than this lesson. I go into this idea that archetypes are nested in biological reality and how we can work with the etheric thought forms of the archetypes. It's a very good curriculum review. It's only eight or nine minutes, but I recommend that you watch it. Maybe even pause this lesson, go watch that, then come back in. If you're going to do that, do it now. If not, I assume you've already watched it. So let's go into the quotes. Some quotes about the archetypes, going to bring it out, frame it all together, and then we are fantastic. Quote from the book. It is possible that future generations will see Jung's theory of archetypes as one of the truly seminal ideas of the 20th century. However, 
like all great ideas, it was not entirely original. It has a long and respectable pedigree, which goes back at least to Plato. Jung himself acknowledged his debt to Plato, describing archetypes as, quote, active, living dispositions, ideas in the platonic sense that preform and continually influence our thoughts and feelings and actions. If you're wondering why I'm reading from the book for something that's quite a simple concept, it's because I want to get Jung's language correct. I want Carl Jung to speak for himself rather than me paraphrasing Jung, and there's enough of that throughout, you know, 60 or 70 years of Jungian literature for me to not try and fall into the same mistake, but inevitably I will. Continuing with the quote, the archetypes are common to all mankind, and yet each person experiences them in his own particular way. And then a very technical quote, this is the theory for the lesson, this is the actual thing, this is the best quote I could introduce from this entire book. If you're not going to read the book, it's a great shame. If you just want to listen to this lesson, pay attention to this quote. It's as accurate as I can get with the archetypal theory. And it's not even my words, it's Anthony Stevens, because he's better at this than me. He wrote the book, I probably never will. Archetypes, quote, being active living dispositions or living organisms endowed with generative force have the capacity to initiate, control, and mediate the common behavioral characteristics and typical experiences of humankind, even though we are, for the most part, unaware of them. As the basis of all the usual phenomena of life, the archetypes transcend culture, race, and time. Thus, in Jung's view, as opposed to Plato's view, the mental events experienced by every individual are determined not merely by his personal history, but by the collective history of the species as a whole, brackets, biologically encoded in the collective unconscious, end brackets, reaching back into the primordial mists of evolutionary time. What a beautiful bit of language. And then we continue over to the next quote, which is about 80 pages later, on encountering the archetypes, ties in directly. Though Jung devoted half a century to the study of archetypes, Carl Jung concluded that they must defeat... This is, this is just... This is me going back to how I started the lesson. I'll start again. You had all that technical and preciseness. Yes, the archetypes and this collective biological... Art. You can watch the curriculum review. I talk about all of this in more detail over there. Those curriculum reviews aren't just book reviews. Often I do little bits of teaching in there as well, just in case you haven't gone into that just yet in the course. Go watch that. You've already watched that. This is where it gets really fun. And this is where I think my intuitive, I don't want to do these lessons. This feels like the wrong direction. This doesn't feel like the living engagement with archetypal reality. Turns out that I maybe have some kind of subconscious conditioning, or maybe my years of client work have taught me that this kind of dynamic that we're sharing right now isn't the best approach to getting the most out of the archetypes. I'm trying my best throughout this module to make it as practical as possible. This lesson, unfortunately, will suffer. But Anthony Stevens says, though he devoted over half a century to the study of archetypes, Jung concluded that they must defeat all attempts to grasp them academically. Ultimately, you cannot define an archetype any more than you can define meaning. You can only experience it. Unfortunately, I found a connective quote from the archetypes and the collective unconscious, which very much backs it up. And I love this because it confirms my own bias. In dealing with the shadow or the anima, it is not sufficient just to know about these concepts and to reflect on them. Nor can we ever experience their content by feeling our way into them or by appropriating other people's feelings. It is no use at all, it is no use at all, to learn a list of archetypes by heart. Archetypes are complexes of experience that come upon us like fate, and their effects are felt in our most personal life. Final quote that I'm going to bring through in just a moment about how we can actually work with the archetypes. I'm just going to prepare this and put that beautiful book right back down, the beautiful book that I obviously spoiled by highlighting all over, but that's the point of engaging with books. Even the most beautiful book should be used for education, in my personal opinion. Archetypes are not to be listed like a series of to be integrated, yet to be integrated. This is indeed the immutable qualities of the king, the warrior, the magician, the lover, the priestess, the huntress, the crone, the maiden, the mother, the lover, and yet I am also going to do that in this module, and my heart hurts 
about the fact that I'm going to do it this way, because it would be like me describing the play-by-play. -play. It's a bit of a, you know, dramatic example. Me saying to you, this is what sex feels like, and I'm describing all of the literal things that happen during sex, of course it's not actually what sex is. If I'm saying this is how the foreplay goes, and this is a moment where the foreplay turns into the main event, and then the main event has this stage and this stage and this stage, and then you have this and then you have that, you're getting an idea, but the idea isn't the experience, and the experience is where life is lived, and archetypal reality is always trying to break through. Carl Jung at his most extreme, Throughout this book, at his most extreme, he'll say that we almost become daemonically possessed. Not the idea of the demon, but the daemon, the Greek inner soul or soulful essence. James Hillman talks about this a lot. He's another Jungian writer. You can read him on your own time. But this daemonic possession of what happens when a 70-year-old man suddenly abandons his career as a reputable professor and goes and runs off with the cute little redhead who's just turned 21 he's possessed by the daemon of the anima psychology. What happens to the man who sees red when his wife is suddenly put into danger in an alleyway in the middle of the city after a night out at the theatre? Well, maybe he turns into Batman. I don't know why I'm referencing Batman just there. It's that, you know, that theatre scene where he's getting that, imagine like a thing where Mr. Wayne, never mind, Batman example, maybe he defends, you know, he's, he has a great courageous moment and he comes out and he takes on the archetype of the superhero. And he defeats the robber because normally he's a very mild-mannered man. You never think of hurting someone. But his wife's suddenly in danger and he is gouging eyes and cutting off balls because he is tapped into the archetype of the savage barbarian. But there's also an archetypal energy of the knight there. This is where the warrior energy breaks down. Interesting moment for the lesson. The warrior isn't one thing. Are we talking about the warrior as the samurai? The samurai as good samurai or wayward samurai? Are we talking about the general? Or not, not the general, we're talking about the foot soldier? Or maybe the Apache pilot? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Archetypes break down. They break down into subdivisions depending upon the particular context and the particular individual. We will never get to the bottom of this, so to give a laundry list of, yes indeed, this is what the samurai, it's, you can't exhaust it. You cannot exhaust it. The warrior breaks down into subdivisions, because the shadow also appears as shadow territory, shadow entity, and shadow behavior within the archetypal. That's what I tried to do in the lesson on the subpersonality, showing just how complex and messy it can get if you spend too much time talking about it rather than talking with the archetypes, which is the crucial aspect of this lesson. Final quote from this book here, how do we actually start integrating the archetypes, which will be the whole thrust of this module. Quote from Carl Jung, Carl Jung himself, main man himself, this is what he says after dozens of books, decades of work, this is what he's saying at the end of the chapter on the archetypes of the collective unconscious. As the archetypes, like all numinous contents, are relatively autonomous, they cannot be integrated simply by rational means, but require a dialectical procedure, a conversation, a real coming to terms with them, often conducted by the patient in dialogue form, so that without knowing it, he puts into effect the alchemical definition of the meditatio, or meditatio, and never did learn how to speak the Latin, an inner colloquy with one's good angel. Continuing the quote, usually the process runs a dramatic course with many ups and downs. It expresses itself in, or is accompanied by, dream symbols that are related to the representation collectives which form mythical motifs and psychological symbols of transformation. And if you want to go deep into Carl Jung, you can see just how mandala heavy he gets throughout the book. Maybe you can see some of these, there we go, he's got lots of nice mandalas, and he's really into his mythological motifs. It's a bit interesting because Carl Jung simultaneously says you can't get to the bottom of the archetypes, and it's about dialogues, and then proceeds to spend the next 400 pages trying to break down the archetype of the self, and that's of course a wonderful contribution, but the the inherent contradiction and the paradox of trying to teach on this topic, as I tried to mention at the start of the lesson, it's like talk about God. It's important we have the conversation. I want you and I to have some kind of understanding of God, to have a variety of religious discourse, to be able to draw upon the world's religions, to be able to have theologically, theologically informed philosophical conversations which bring us closer towards the major questions of why are we here, 
who is God? What is God? What's my relationship to God? How can I be on the positive side of God? What's hell? What's heaven? What's going on? Help me, please. We can figure out those questions. But fundamentally, your relationship with God is your lived relationship in your heart, in your soul, and that's where the connection is built. This is all preparation. This is all padding. You won't get to the archetypal core unless you're having the conversations, which is what we explored in the introductory module about shadow work when it comes to active imagination and just working with some of the basic dynamics of repression and opening up the space so that we can go deeper into our own psychic territory. You're going to have to read these books and at the same time, unfortunately, you're going to have to then move beyond the books and focus on your live relationship, which is going to be the primary focus of this module. Bear with me as we get through this. I'm going to do my absolute best, but it's maybe important for you to know, and I think it would be a genuine it would be a genuine shame for me to kind of cut off or mask off my own internal resistance towards teaching this module in this way because I'm so fundamentally rooted in client experience. I enjoy working with a particular woman over the course of multiple months, and I see how her particular version of the priestess archetype, of the maiden archetype, and of the Queen the archetype that's coming through, start to contextualize. A normal exchange between me and a client would be something like, the client says, for example, oh, I was noticing that during the um, during the date, I was really in a maiden energy. And I said, oh, what did it feel like for you this time? And they say, well, actually, last time when I was in the maiden energy, I felt it more like a bubbly, lighthearted, playful energy. But this time, it seemed, it seemed like a younger experience, like a younger part of me, maybe like a 17, 18-year-old part of me. But it was more mischievous with a bit of a cruelty element in there. And I say, hmm, do you really think that was the maiden? And they go, hmm, you know, it's some of the maiden, but actually it might also be some of the evil queen. Oh, why do you think it's the evil queen? And then we explore. And then, see, it's living. It's real. I'm pulling something out of nowhere. It could be another male client. The male client saying to me, Jordan, I went to the gym five times this week. I got a PR on my deadlift. I've lifted heavier than I've ever lifted. And after that, rep after I locked it out at the top of the rep and I stood there and I saw the gym with slightly fuzzy eyes because if you've ever done a heavy, heavy deadlift you're on the verge of passing out and he drops the bar and he feels like he could beat his chest he's in the energy that's far more interesting than reading a fucking book about it I love books but it's not the thing it's not the thing and I'm gonna completely be a contradiction because we're gonna go into a lesson on masculine archetypes where I'm gonna be holding up the book and going into the book. Such is the wonder of inner work. I'll see you in that lesson.